You are now tuned in to the Next Dimension University broadcast. Come under the Godnosphere and experience the next dimension in destiny with us. Be empowered and educated through any of the 61 and growing ministry career fields. We are a school of purpose. We are a school of destiny. We are poised and ready to prepare, equip, empower, and deploy you into your kingdom assignment. We are the lowest cost, fully accredited Bible college in Southern California today. And now, join us as your destiny began. All right, blessings. This is Dr. McLeod, and you're here at Next Dimension University Bible College. And there's an emphasis in Bible because uh, we are proponents for the Word of God and the Bible hard text. We want you to wag. We want you to tote. We want your Bible to be visible because that's what we represent in this particular school here at Next Dimension University. So today, if you have your Bibles, would you raise your Bibles to the heavens and say, this is my Bible. I believe in everything that it says. I meditate God's word. I give my all to the study of God's word. For when I go... This word will lead me. When I sleep, this word will keep me. And when I awake, this word will talk to me. And I like the word talking to me. Because God talking to me is going to be based on what his word says. He's not going to say anything that his word does not say. I'm not trying to go to La La Land. Tell somebody. I'm not trying to go to La La Land. I want to know what God's word says. Then I know it will be in the context of what God is saying to me. If you believe that, come on, raise those Bibles up and say, this is the word of God. This is, I'm committed to this book until Jesus returns. I know there are some lost books. But I found 66 of them. I'm not concerned about the Maccabees right now. I'm not concerned about the Apocrypha right now. I'm not concerned about the Torah anthology right now. I found the 66 canonized books of the Bible. These are the ones that bears the seal of divine inspiration. I'm devoted to these from front cover to back cover. From the text to the pretext to the post text to the central text, this is my devotion. The word said for me to study, to show myself approved unto God. A workman. Come on, say, I'm ready to work. Come on, say, I'm ready to work. Come on, say, I'm ready to work. Don't tell me to study and don't give me the tools and give me the rules to read this Bible, to study this Bible, to meditate this Bible. I think I got it down pat now. I'm ready to go. If you're ready to go, put your Bibles down and give God a great big hand of applause here at Next Dimension University Bible College. We're looking forward to you coming on board with this campaign for stomping out biblical illiteracy and raising up master teachers and all the other gubernatorial offices for end time deployment. Come on board here on Next Dimension University's campaign. Come on, give them another great big hand of applause as we move forward. Okay, right there in your hand, you should have your syllabus. Uh, please govern yourselves according to the syllabus. Furthermore, if you will, just open your um, packet there, the Stomping Out Biblical Literacy packet. And the first thing on program is the uh, research document and record, and that's what we are to do as scholars. We can't tell people to be scholars. We can't tell them uh, to, stu to be students and don't show them the way. You are responsible to be a researcher, a recorder, a reporter, an interpreter, and an articulator, okay? Those are your assignments to research. So when it's all said and done, um, what you're going to have is your training and your expertise in research. What did I say? Amen. So you will have when you graduate with your doctor's degree, you would have also your 
library. And in your library, your hard copy physical library. And uh, just like a doctor, um, a doctor should not know his medical book more than you know your Bible book. A lawyer should not know his law book better than you know your Bible book. So you're going to have your physical library with all of your various uh, resources, study resources. We realize that the primary text is our hardcover Bible, King James Version, preferably without training wheels, tabs on the side. This is our primary text, right? And we want to make sure that we put mileage on this text. We don't want pretty Bibles at Next Dimension University. We want wore out, torn up, if you will, tattered Bibles. Are y'all with me? So that when Dr. McLeod does his Bible inspection of his student body, we can see that you've been giving your time to the investigation of the scriptures. Are you guys with me? So there are three things you must do. You got to muse the text, that is to run scriptures. Hear the turning of the scriptures. Hey, you could do that with your iPhone. That's an artificial sound. This is the real sound right here. I know they might have that artificial soup, soup, soup sound in your iPhone, special effect or something. But this, there's, in Judaism, this sound is wonderful. It's a wonderful sound. If you go to a church and you don't hear this, first of all, if you don't hear the name of Jesus, nobody's saying Jesus. Nobody's saying Holy Ghost. They're like, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> don't get me wrong. You know, that was just two, school, two different schools. You know, King James recruited scholars and some were recruited, you know, uh, Cambridge, Oxford, and Westminster. And some translated Holy Spirit and others translated Holy Ghost. So there's no real difference. But over time you know, uh, cultural, economic uh, factors and influences uh, started embracing a certain terminology that would not sound as though you're holy rollers. Nobody wants to sound like I'm a holy roller. The holy roller, them, them holy ghosts, those, uh, those uh, holy rollers over there. So we had to separate ourselves and tone it down. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit over here, but you gotta go in the back room over here. The Holy Spirit is there. <laughs> well, in Catholicism, you guys, uh, you know, the, uh, the afterglow. The afterglow was after they had mass, right? And um, the nuns wanted to see the Holy Ghost really have his way. So they couldn't do it during mass. So they waited till after, right? And then they allowed the Holy Ghost to have his way after church, if you will. <laughs> That's why they call it the afterglow. Okay, it came after we had the regular routine of church. And, uh, and then some scholars, I love what some scholars have to say in underscoring the Holy Ghost as the second blessing. A lot of people don't espouse to that, but the second blessing, I, was, I love that concept, you know. Although when you get fills, of course, you're going to have um, proponents on both sides. Uh, some people feel when you get saved, you automatically receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, I believe when you get saved, you receive the Holy Ghost. But I believe in the second blessing as in the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Okay, with a cognizant, with a cognition of actually, uh, you know, uh, experiencing uh, the overflow or the infilling uh, that you're alert and aware of it because something I talk to people all the time is like I, 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 How long you been saved? Well, I've been my people my mama been in church all forever We've been in, in I've been going to church since I was a kid. You're not telling me how long you've been saved. So there's a d definitive time That you can put your finger on and say I've been baptized overflowing saturated, okay with the Holy Spirit, okay? And uh, I venture to say, of course, not trying to be too uh, subjective about this, but Ephesians 4 makes it clear that um, be filled with the Spirit, right? Be not drunk with wine, we're in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So I propose to everybody in the room that 
perhaps I venture to say you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost every day. I got one hand, but she's paid for that. Don't, 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 don't. I get that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, mother. I'm just <laughs> mother's my greatest support. Everybody's like, you just destroyed my sacred cow, Dr. McLeod. I sure did. Because you save and you still cuss like a sailor. <laughs> you call yourself saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And, uh, you know, carnality is wreaking havoc in your life. Uh-huh. Uh, so it might be in your best interest, glory to God, to be filled with the Holy Ghost every day. Because you're still talking about how you used to be anointed. <laughs> I remember back in the day when the Holy Ghost used to use me. I feel like Janet Jackson. What have you done for you lately? <laughs> what has the Lord done for you lately? How have you been flowing in God lately? Okay. Manna, the food that was dropped, you know, for the children of Israel, is to be eaten on the spot. It's manna. It's fresh now, right? It's a now thing. If you don't eat it now, it'll get worms and it will so forth, Right? We want to know, are you in manna now? Are you flowing in God now? Is the anointing evident now? Is the Holy Ghost evident now? Are you guys with me? Yeah. All right, so let's be mindful of that. All right, so we're reporters, we're researchers. We got to get it right. We research, we record. Document it. Learn to write. Put pen to parchment. Ain't what you think. Put it down so it could be found. Document, document, document. All right? Stop relying on recorders. So some of you, you have to do that. Uh, but you need to be the recorder. Amen? Because there's an anointing in writing. When you're under the Godmosphere and you're under a scribe, an end time Luke, that's a writer, because I write, okay? Everyone in this room will write books because you're under a, a mantle of an author, a writer, a publisher. You will write, and it's already in your gut to write, okay? But we're going to give you a call to action as you stay under the anointing so you could move forward. But what we're saying to you, what you hear, put it down. Amen. Research, record, report. Learn how to just give a report. A report means just data. A dissemination of information, a dissemination of information, no, no, no opinion, no subjectivity, just data that you are delivering audibly. Learn to perfect reporting. Put the information out there without any contamination of yourself, your own ideology, your own philosophy, your own theory. All right. Report. Everybody say report interpret interpret is the big one right because we're all looking at the same scripture but everybody's coming up with something different right and part of that is because it has a lot to do with our upbringing and our training in 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 churchianity i'm not going to call it christianity in churchianity we have seen optics and just like Elisha and Elijah, you know, we learn by observation, you guys. Elisha was able to smot the Jordan and departed hither and thither because he saw his prophetic father in the faith do it. He didn't understand it. He was just watching. Now, that's to a positive slant. To a negative connotation is the same thing. We are reproducing what we see, the optics. Hollywood preachers, L.A. preachers. Are y'all hearing me today? We're reproducing everything we see. There was a little kid on uh, Facebook was preaching just like his pastor. Didn't understand a word he was saying. It was just a mimic. It was robotic. And for many of us, we're mimicking. That's why there's no power. There's no, uh, because there's no authenticity. If there is no originality, if there is no authenticity, it is weak, it is frail, and God, like my spiritual mother said, God will not anoint a lie. Will not anoint a lie. So stop looking without and look within. 
all that you need for your destiny and for your purpose is within you in seed form. Yeah. And it is the role of the five-fold gubernatorial officers, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and pastor, and teacher, is to water what the, the seed profile, the genesis that's already in your gut that God has placed there before the foundation of the world, before you were birthed. It's there. We water that seed. That's our role. That's why we got to be careful not to put, not to filter it, contaminate it with our own thoughts. What we think. Are you guys with me? So I don't know how we got on that, but because we're in a prophetic room and we're under the God atmosphere and we don't, we, this is the next dimension. This is not Cambridge. This is not, for that matter, Fuller or Biola or Azusa. It's God bless all of those mantles and all those institutions. This is next dimension. Somebody says next dimension. It's an honor uh, to be here. Thank you all so much for all that you've done, especially New Dimension University to all the graduates. God bless next. Well, it's new next for me. <laughs> Thank you all for laughing at the joke. It really wasn't appropriate. I'm so sorry. God bless you. Uh, I appreciate it. Really do. Okay, Yolanda Adams, Fred Hammond. Um, I didn't start out to get this. I didn't start out to get a record deal. I didn't start out to get a Grammy. I didn't start out to any of that. I just felt as a young kid, I wanted to tell somebody about the Lord. And I, I made decisions and choices. I took down because the word of God says, he that humbles shall be exalted. And I watch God exalt in many different situations. So to get this award and to get this doctorate, it's just God's way of saying, you know, I told you, if you follow my word, if you follow my word, I got your back. Awesome. Fred Hammond, Judy Jacobs, what does it mean to you? As a Native American and the baby of 12, I am so distinctly honored today. Uh, I, I look back on my life and I see a little brown Indian girl that uh, everybody thought was so shy and so backward as I was. But something happened when I turned 12 years old. The Holy Spirit came into my life, changed my life. And today I give God all the glory and all the honor. It all goes to him. I'm very, very honored today. And he had to stand up before the people and say, you know what? I was saying that, but I was wrong. You need to be able to do that. Amen. Have integrity in your verbal discourse, preaching and teaching. If you know you said something that you have no preponderance of evidence regarding, you said something that you haven't researched, you haven't qualified by the text, and the Holy Ghost is checking you right when you are saying it, and you are saying it anyway so that you can make an impression on the people, and you're trying to protect your carnality, you're going to lose that check because you don't want to lose that check. Tell somebody, you don't want to lose that check of the Holy Ghost. You don't want to lose that check because you're going to mess up in the flow, the finding, the level of the wind. You're going to mess up in the flow of God because now you're going to, I want to say confused, you're going to make fuzzy the directives of the Holy Ghost when you're standing before his people. He's nudging. He's wooing. He's leading. He's guiding when you have that mic in your hand and your, your gums are chopping. You better be listening to God. Are y'all hearing me? 
Just need that to resonate right there. Value the Torah. We don't want to know you're in the room. We want to know God's in the room. We don't want to know you showed up. We want to know God showed up. And that's why, you know, at some point we'll talk about the theology of the anointing compared to the theology of glory. Because we want to be anointed so that people can look on us. Because when we leave, wasn't he anointed? But see, the glory of God shuts all that stuff down. And in the end, we don't know what happened. We just know God was in the room. We'll talk about the theology of glory versus theology of the anointing another time. All right, so popular misquotes, please look at those because we got to get it right. Tell somebody we got to get it right. If you said women ought to keep quiet in the church because it's not permitted for them to talk, give me the backdrop, okay? Give me the landscape. Give me the narrative of that text. Give me the contextual equation of that text. Contextual equation, pretext plus, plus central text plus post text equals context, the train of thought, con the contextual equation. Make sure you have a preponderance of evidence to support that claim. Just don't spew out of your mouth folly and ignorance. Stop dignifying your folly here. It doesn't apply to anybody here at Next Dimension University because we're getting it right. Amen. And somebody, I was on the phone the other day with someone, and they, they showed up to school anyway, Gardena. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Taylor, uh, they, I was telling them I, I was just giving them some information, and I was animate about the information. I hate Dr. I, I hope Dr. Saucer's not here to hear this, because she probably, they said, ooh, you're mean. <laughs> I said, um, I'm not being mean to you. I just want to, you know, you, Dr. Dr. Um, Singleton will probably be on their side too, because <laughs> they were talking about, they were talking about, um, I'm fighting, I'm fighting the devil. I'm, 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 I'm working on deliverance. I'm fighting, I'm warring in the spirit. I'm warring in the spirit. They just kept saying that. I'm like, listen, we got to help you with your theology. <laughs> so he's like, ooh, I could hear it all around the room. But I don't, I don't have anything, I don't have any ought against theolo um, the theology of deliverance. But you all know that you've been redeemed, right? Yes. You know that he did everything already on the cross, right? Yes. Did you all know that? Yes. Okay. But we want to be in a fight with the devil all the time. Yes. But you know the Bible never did say fight devil. The scripture says in 6, 17, I believe it's 1 Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. It's a fixed fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Jesus hung on the cross said it's done. Yeah. It's finished. Yeah. But I understand, you know, we want deliverance. I, don't have, I understand that because I write about that, the iniquities and the proclivities and um, the, the um, uh, soul ties and generational curses and and uh, the propensity to do a same thing uh, that is a downfall to your life over and over and over again. Well, you know that he died for your iniquities too. 53rd Isaiah, you just got to read that, you guys. Everything that you're going. So I had to simplify for her. I said, listen, woman of God, there are problems and there are promises. Get a rhema. On the promises, apply it to the problem. Yes, yes, yes. The victory is already yours, according to 1557, uh, 1 Corinthians. Thank be unto God who hath given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You already got the victory. You just need to learn how to apply the word. But not just the Logos, you got to apply the rhema word, the one that you've meditated and you've got a full understanding of. To the given problem that you, that's harassing you right now. Everybody say, let's get our theology right. Okay, we got to get our theology right. I'm, so I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Regarding the textbooks, you guys, I do have a few of the textbooks here. I got call. No, I don't have call to be a speaker yet, but I do have some word image books. They clean me out up there in Gardena. Well, they were purchasing quite a few of the books. Word images and supernatural recall because we're going to show you everything that you learn you're going to be so sharp in recalling it. And we're not going to use any excuse. I'm getting older as my memory is. No. 
This is an anointing. Somebody say, this is an anointing. It's an anointing. Okay? It's supernatural recall. So as long as you flow and you go, you will grow in Jesus' name. You, you're going you're gonna to get it. It's going to flow. And God, he don't want you just to have great memories so that you could, you know, do whatever you do. He wants you to have great recall for winning people to Christ and for talking to people to giving an answer to those who ask of the hope that is within you. Okay, you need to be articulate concerning your faith and articulate concerning the word of God. So you need recall. Somebody say, I need recall. You can't say, well, let me get back with you. I'll get back with you. No. You got to do it in the season. You got to do it in that prophetic moment. You got to be willing to flow with the anointing for that moment. And he'll give you the recall, the articulation. But you got to do something, you guys. You got to do your homework. You got to put it in. Amen. Tell me about Luke 12 and 12. The Bible said that, the de that God will give you what to say. He'll give you, he'll give you what to say, all right, if you've already downloaded. Because remember, it comes from here. Because we keep thinking the theology is they come from out here. No, it comes from here. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God communicate with your spirit, yes. not with your head, yes. not with your carnal, with your spirit. Yes. So it's emanating from here. Amen. This was a wonderful time fellowshipping around the word of God under the Godmosphere here at Next Dimension University. And as a recap, we were going over our stomping out biblical illiteracy packet as well as our syllabus for this scholastic biblical literacy uh, class in particular. And to those of you that are listening by way of television or any other uh, visual or uh, aud audible um, manner or technology, we want you to come on board with Next Dimension University. You can call us and get a handout, and you could be our honorary student uh, here at Next Dimension University Bible College. We look forward to seeing you on the next occasion. This is Dr. McLeod and the School of Destiny, Next Dimension University, signing off, saying God will bless you and keep you as we together continue to strive for the masteries that are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening in to our broadcast. Now log on to nextdimensionuniversity.com and register for your next season of formal training and preparation. If you do not know your calling or just want to enhance your knowledge, Next Dimension University is clearly your next step. So embrace your destiny and be the best you can be. Yes, your destiny starts with us. Your destiny starts today.